Hello everyone, welcome back. In the last lecture, we learned about k-means clustering. In k-means clustering, we are performing a flat clustering algorithm, where we divide a heterogeneous data set into relatively homogeneous clusters and the number of clusters is k. So, the number of clusters is predefined. In this lecture, I will perform k-means clustering using R. I have a synthetic data set. I have created that data set in such a way so that we can easily understand how k-means algorithm work. So, let us uh, jump into R studio and perform k-means uh, clustering. So, the name of the data file is k-mean.csv. So, I will read a uh, use read.csv a function to read it and store the data as a data variable. Now, to understand what type of data it is, let us open that data to see what we have here. So, you can see it is a two column data. The first column is for P1 and the second column is for P2. You can imagine P1, P2 may be just two parameter or variable that you may have measured in an experiment. And uh, there are 89 samples here, right? So, we have 89 rows. Now, let me plot this data as a scatter plot to see that how that data is distributed. Does it has some clusters already or not? Uh, that will be clear if I uh, make a, a scatter plot. So, I am using the plot function here and the arguments are data is obviously the input argument and I want to use the symbol 1 so that I will get you know open circle as symbol and I we want to say using uh, size 2. So, I have made the plot here. Let me zoom it out. So, you can see as I said, it is a synthetic data. I have intentionally created this data so that uh, we can understand the k-means clustering easily. So, p1 and p2 are the horizontal and vertical axis respectively and we have this 81 data point. You can easily see on the left hand side of the diagram, we have uh, almost like two clusters I can see whereas, here I may have uh, for two or three or more clusters right on the right hand side and these two are quite uh, separated right and so our k-means algorithm should be able to detect it right. So, let us move and uh, move for uh, performing k-means. So, to perform k-means what I will do I will use a inbuilt function called k-means it is inbuilt in R. So, what will be the arguments ok the first argument will be the data. The second argument here given as 2 is the number of cluster I want. So, I am starting the clustering with 2 clusters. I do not know what is the optimum number of clusters in this data. So, blindly I am starting with 2 because that is the minimum number of cluster you want, right. And if you remember the last lecture, uh, see the initial seeding of the centroid or the center of each clusters are random, right. And where you have seeded that actually can change the result of k-means uh, algorithm. So, what we usually do? We repeat the same uh, process multiple time, right. So, I will start uh, the k-means algorithm to find two clusters once and it will reach the result and perform the uh, complete the uh, work and then again I will start on the same data with two, me, uh, two, two clusters and I will again try to perform the clustering. So, in this way, we perform multiple clustering and then we decide the algorithm decide by default which one is giving the best result and that best result is given as a output to you. So, by n start I am saying that the number of start number of number random start that I have to do in this algorithm is 50 right. Usually it should be 20 or more than 20 I have kept it 50 to be safe. So, I will execute this k-means function and I will store all the output of that uh, function into a variable called km2, km2 because I have 2 uh, k equal to 2. So, I performed it. Uh, let us check the result of it. Okay? So, how should I check the result? Uh, before I go into details of that, let me click on this km2 variable and see what we have. Okay? We have lots of information in km2. It has this cluster variable which I will come and discuss. It is actually a list, right? It is a vector which stores the number, uh, the label of the cluster to which a particular observation belongs, right? So, suppose I have 89 data points. Some of them has I perform 2 uh, k equal to 2 k means clustering. So, I have 2 clusters in my data, right? So, now 
some of the data, some of the observation will be in cluster 1, some of the will be in cluster 2. So, this cluster list or vector store that information, right. The center which we will call again the centers variable stores the coordinate of the centroid of each of these cluster. So, I have two centro uh, cluster. So, that means two centroid that is why 2 by 2 because uh, it is a two dimensional data. So, I have a 2 by 2 centers information. So, we will collect and use this information to understand how the clustering is working and also if you remember to evaluate the quality of clustering, we use the dispersion of the data within each cluster that is by within cluster sum of square and we compare the dispersion of the clusters among themselves by between cluster sum of square. So, I will go and discuss them in detail how to uh, use those data uh, to understand how my k means clustering is working, but I can get it from here the, that uh, tot uh, dot within SS this is give, give this gives the total within cluster sum of square whereas, the between SS gives the sum of square between the clusters. I will come back to this proceed further. So, uh, let me check this uh, data uh, for the cluster information once uh, in this km2. So, I am taking the km2 and asking it to give me the variable cluster. So, you can see here I have printed that. So, it is a list it has uh, 89 elements right because I have 89 observation. So, the first uh, uh, element is 1 that means my first observation let me open my data. So, my first observation is this one for which p 1 is 0.435 and p 2 is 39. My k means algorithm for k equal to 2 is telling that ok this data belongs to this observation belongs to cluster 1. Whereas, the last observation the 89th observation right 89th observation my algorithm is saying that that belongs to cluster 2 that is why it has uh, stored the label 2 in this cluster variable. So, this is how it has stored right. So, it each of these observation is now labeled right either it is in cluster 1 or in cluster 2. This information will be very useful because when you want to, want to plot the k means clustering result or I want to extract suppose I want all the data point all the observation for cluster 2 in one uh, as a one set. So, in that case I have to use these labels. Let me go back uh, to my script and see what we will do now. So, now I have uh, got an idea that which observation is in cluster 1, which observation is uh, cluster 2 something like that. Now, I want to visualize it. So, I will make a scatter plot where each of these observation those dots will be colored based upon in which cluster it is. So, for example, I say ok all observations which are in cluster 1 will be colored by black right. Whereas, the all observation in cluster 2 will be colored by red something like that. So, what I am doing? I am using the plot function which can plot a scatter plot and I am using the data as my input argument the same data right. I want to plot it as a scatter plot, but what I am giving extra to this this time is that I am telling this plot function that there is a, an, another argument for coloring these symbols of this observation. How should you color? You should color it based on the labels of the data point the observation given in this k m 2 dollar cluster variable right. So, this cluster variable stores the info label of each of this observation with respect to which cluster it belongs and you use that information to color it. So, what will happen? If you remember that we have seen that uh, here if you see uh, in the console first observation is labeled as 1 right. So, for that while plotting color will become equal to 1 and in R color equal to 1 means black. Whereas, the last observation the 89th observation the label is 2 second cluster. So, for this color will become call equal to 2 and by default in R call equal to 2 means red color. So, that is what I am using this is the simple trick I am using that I am using the color code of R and uh, the, the labels of the clusters to make R uh, plot the data with the color for each of these clusters. So, that is how I have defined the color and then I am using a symbol 20 it will be a field circle and I want the size 3. So, let me plot that I have plotted zoom it ok. 
we have done k means algorithm for k equal to 2 that means 2 cluster. So, this is my first cluster, these all black dots are first cluster and all these red dots are the second cluster. It is obvious the way I have created the data, we can easily see that all these black dots are quite away, quite far from the red dot. So, obviously that is how k means algorithm has broken down this data into two clusters. Now, I have got plotted the scatter plot where each of these clusters are now color coded. Now, you may be interested to see where are the centroid, what is the central position for each of these cluster. So, for that on the same cluster plot what I can do, I can overlay some extra data. So, what I will overlay? I will overlay that center data. If you remember uh, that came has the center data where the information, the coordinate of each of the centroid of these two clusters are stored. So, I will take that data. So, what I am doing? I am using points as a function, points function and I am giving, giving came to dollar center. So, I am fetching the centers variable information and using that as an argument to this point function. So, it will create points at those coordinate and I am using color equal to 3. So, this will be green color and I am using a symbol square, field square. So, PCH is equal to 15 and the size is 3. So, if I execute this, let me zoom on the same plot what I have now on these uh, these two green uh, squares are there, they are the centroid for the corresponding cluster. So, this one on the right hand side near uh, P 1 equal to 1, this green box, this green square shows the centroid of my cluster 2, whereas the other green here on the left hand side is the centroid for cluster 1. Now, when you are performing k min algorithm, you do not really know how many clusters should be there, right? So, let us in this case also, it, I do not know whether these two clusters are good enough or I can actually break down this data in further in more clusters. So, what I will try now, I will use the same algorithm on the same data, but I will set k equal to 3 first and then I will move into k equal to 4. So, let us do the uh, k equal to 3, we, I will use the same k means uh, function, everything remains same. Uh, I will plot the same scatter plot with the same uh, way, way of color coding. So, in this case, I will have uh, three color, one for the first cluster 1, two for the cluster 2, that means the cluster 1 will be black, cluster 2 will be red and the third cluster, the color will be 3, that means it will be green. I execute the script for that, the plot is ready, let us zoom and see. Okay. Earlier, uh, we have two clusters, but now we have three because k, k equal to three. So, what the algorithm has done? It has broken down this right hand side cluster in the previous result into two part and you can easily law use the logic. This is obvious that you can easily actually see that uh, this one, the red one, the second clusters is quite far from the uh, black one, right? So, it has broken it into two part. Now, if I say, okay, now perform for k equal to four. Uh, possibly what can happen either maybe these two can be broken or maybe uh, this green thing, this green cluster may be broken into two. I do not know. Let us see which one it will do. So, I will now perform for k equal to 4, same k means uh, function and the same way I will plot the scatter plot with color code. So, here is the diagram. So, that is what it has done. So, now what is that it has done? it has broken down these uh, earlier, this left hand side, we had only one cluster. So, it has now break, uh, broken it into two part, one is green, one is black. So, I have now four clusters in this data. Now, while we are discussing the k-means algorithms, the theory of that in the earlier class, we have discussed that there is no way that I can know that what will be the optimum value of k before I perform k-means clustering, right? And uh, there is a method to systematically decide that what should be the optimum value of k. So, while I am executing this, you must be wondering that how far I will go. Should I keep on doing k equal to 5, 6, up to k equal to 10, something like that? Obviously not. So, I have to decide I will stop somewhere, right? So, how to do that? In case of k-means algorithm, we can use two information to decide that what should be the optimum number of k, okay, optimum value for k, that is the optimum number of clusters in my data. That is decided based upon the 
within cluster sum of square and between cluster sum of square for each of the k. So, what I have done till now, I have performed k means algorithm for k equal to 2, k equal to 3, k equal to 4. For all these, I have stored the data in km2, km3 and km4. So, now I can fetch from this km2, km3, km4 the within cluster sum of square and between cluster sum of square data. But before I fetch that and visualize it to decide what should be the optimum value of k, uh, what I will do? I will perform the k-means clustering for few more values of k like 5, 6 and 7. That is uh, will be similar to what I ha we have done. We do not need much explanation. So, I have written down them here. I am changing k from 5, 6 to 7. So, at a go, I will uh, execute all those. So, I have now completed uh, all the clustering from k equal to 2 to k equal to 7. Now, I will fetch the within cluster sum of square data for each of this clustering output. Now, what is within cluster sum of data? Within cluster sum of, sum of square is the measure of dispersion of data within a cluster. So, if I have three cluster, for each cluster, I can calculate the sum of square deviation of each of the data in that cluster from its centroid. So, if this dispersion is small, that means the cluster is very cohesive, very, very homogeneous. That means my clustering is good. So, what we will do? We will take the total within cluster sum of square, right? So, if I have three cluster, for each you have within cluster sum of square, and for all these three you sum together. So, you get total within cluster sum of square. So, for each of this clustering, I start with, for example, KM2 stores the data for k equal to 2. Km3 store for Km, uh, k equal to 3 and so on up to uh, km equal to 7, it will be 7. So, from each of these uh, uh, output, I fetch the total within cluster sum of square data. So, what is how it is written? Km2 dollar total TOT dot dot within SS. So, that will fetch the total within cluster sum of square for that particular uh, came in clustering result. In this way, I will go up to the 7 k equal to 7 1. So, I execute them at a go. So, I have already uh, uh, fetched them and stored them as k 2 w 2 w 3 up to w 7. So, now I will plot this data as a bar plot and that is what I am doing in the next part of the script. I am calling the bar plot function. What should be the input? I am creating a vector for each of these values that I collected. So, I have collected w2 to w7. So, I am making a vector using this uh, w2, w3, w4 up to w7 and I am using the c function to create the vector. And then uh, I have to put the label below each of the bar, right? So, uh, we have to put the names for each of these bars. So, the names variable is another argument for bar plot that is equal to set to I am creating a sequence of number starting from 2 to 7 because k equal to 2 up to k equal to 7. So, I am using the uh, sequence function uh, seek and I am labeling the x axis horizontal axis equal to as k and y axis the horizontal vertical axis I am labeling as within cluster sum of square and I am putting the limit from 0 to 4. Point four, uh, 0 to 4 because you can see uh, that w2 has the highest one which is 3. So, I want to scale it from the vertical axis from 0 to uh, 4. Let me plot it, it will be clear. So, let me zoom here. So, I have zoomed here. So, the horizontal axis is k. I have performed 7 k means uh, clustering with values of k starting from 2 to 7. For each of them, we have extracted the within cluster sum of square. This is the total within cluster sum of square. So, you can see when I have two clusters, I have a very high value. That means, I have quite high heterogeneity within the cluster. But as I increase the number of clusters, I change k from 2 towards 7, you can easily see that total within cluster sum of square is dropping very fast and it is becoming very shallow asymptotically stabilized. Right? It is become like asymptote. So, it is becoming a fixed value after ar around 6 or uh, 5 something like that. right? So, uh, maybe looking at this data you can easily see that maybe if I stop at 5 k equal to 5 or k, up to k equal to 6, it will be optimal. I do not need to go beyond 6 actually. right? So, maybe I should choose k equal to 5 or k equal to 6. Uh, for my final uh, clustering result. 
So, before I move into this, this is the within cluster sum of square which gives you the dispersion of the data within the cluster. I now will calculate also the between cluster sum of square. So, this is the dispersion between the clusters and this dispersion should be high. My clusters should be separated from each other, right. So, what I will do just like within cluster sum of square, I will fetch the between cluster sum of square from each of this uh, k means algorithm output using this between SS variable, right. So, that is what I am doing here. I am saying k m 2, k m 2 is the first clustering that I have done with k equal to 2 dollar sign and between SS. So, it will fetch the between SS data for k m 2 and I will assign that to b 2. I am doing that up to b 7. I execute all those together. So, I have already calculated got the b 2 b, b up to b 7. Now, I will create a bar plot just like I did for the within cluster. Let me check the bar plot. See, we can see from 2 to 3 there is slight increase in the between cluster sum of square. That is good. We want that the cluster should be separated, right. And then as I move forward after 5 actually there is not much change right they are almost same. So, I have seen that uh, in within cluster sum of square from 5 to 6 it has become almost same it has become very low. So, 5 or 6 I could have picked k equal to 5 or 6 I could check uh, pick for my final uh, clustering and whereas, the between cluster SS is saying showing me that okay, 5 may be the optimum one. So, using this within cluster sum of square data and between cluster sum of square data, I finalize, I decide that I will use k equal to 5 for k min clustering for this data set. So, let me plot that. So, I have selected k equal to 5, right. So, I am selected k equal to 5 because that is giving optimum. So, I have already performed the k min clustering for k equal to 5 and that is stored in uh, k m 5. So, I will just plot that as a scatter plot. Here it is. So, it has what it has done? It has broken down this the right hand side clusters into two, three part, where the right hand left hand side cluster is divided into two part. So, this is I believe is a optimum clustering for my uh, data set. Now, the last thing that we will learn in this particular uh, lecture is that okay, I have done optimum clustering with k equal to 5. Now, I want to fetch the observation for a particular cluster, right? That may be useful for you. So, uh, for example, suppose I want to extract the data of cluster 1. So, how I will do? Remember this km5 dollar cluster that is the cluster information in km5 where k was equal to 5 stores the label for cluster for each of this observation, right. Now, what I will do? I will use the which function to extract the index of those observation, index of those observation which has uh, which belongs to cluster 1, right. So, what I am doing? I want to find the index of those observation which belongs to cluster 1. So, how I am doing it? I am using which function and I am saying k m 5 cluster is equal to 1, right. If I want to fetch the data for cluster 5, I will say it will be equal to 5. So, that indexes, those indexes are now stored at C 1, cluster 1. And now, I extract the data from da that C 1 data from my original data variable. So, how do I do it? I say data and then I index the row and column. The row number is this uh, C 1 and the column values because I want both the columns right P 1 and P 2. So, I keep that empty. So, this will fetch me all the data in observation in my data variable where those observations belongs to cluster 1 and I assign that to cluster dot 1. Got it? Let us check the cluster 1 in the data frame I can check it. So, you can see cluster 1 has 24 observation. It is written here 24 observation 2 variable. So, it has maintained the original indexes. So, 15, 16, 17, 18 these all are are in part of the cluster 1. These are the original observations index and they all belong to cluster 1. So, what we have learned in this lecture? We have seen how to perform k means clustering using R and we have seen how to plot it in a scatter plot 
with the color code for each of this cluster. Then I, I have shown you how to decide the optimum number of clusters that is value of k based upon the within cluster sum of square data and between cluster sum of square data. And at the end we have seen how can I fetch the data for a part observations for a particular clusters, right. You can do it for other clusters also. That is all for this video. Thank you for learning with me today.